Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides at auto advance every 15 seconds. On behalf of the OSCON committee, I want to talk to you about presentations that suck. If you've been here at OSCON, you've seen them, those terrible speakers that do those terrible, horrible, sucky, boring presentations, and you've asked yourself, how do they do it? How do they manage to suck time after time so consistently? Well, it's by cultivating seven habits, and I'm going to tell you about them. Habit number one, hide behind the podium. The podium is your friend. Make sure that you don't come out. Protect yourself. Don't make eye contact. Whatever you do, don't come out and walk around. Number two. Few things are more boring than talking about yourself. So talk about yourself and where you went to school and your pets and the other projects you participated in and some awards and accomplishments and things that you've won and maybe have a picture of yourself. But there is one thing that's more boring about talk than talking about yourself and that's talking about your company. Yes, talk about all the products that you make and all the different uh, customers that you have and some of the things that you've done and where you're founded and where you're located and your various details. Properly presented, you don't have to have much of the rest of the presentation at all because you can start maybe back at the beginning of time and then talk about all the open source projects you contribute to and all the different cool things your company does, does and why it's a cool place to work for and then maybe have a little map of your company's locations. Uh, now, for our next habit, um, I need to read this. Hold on. Uh, it's called presenting for the blind. Presenting for the blind is an old but extremely effective habit. Presenting for the blind is where you read every line of every slide. It is extremely boring. It also gives the audience the impression that you either think they're illiterate or that you've never seen these slides before. Maybe you haven't. For our next habit, we're going to talk about slide design, specifically Dr. Bronner's School of Slide Design. Look at that design. There's a man who knew how to use space. No wasted space. White space is your enemy. So you need to make sure to fill up all the white space of every slide with text. Look at all that text. Look at all those bullet points. Look at all those acronyms. It runs off the bottom of the page. Oh. Oh my God, we have a big block of white space on the, left side of the, on the left side of the slide, so we need to fill that with an irrelevant picture. But anybody can fill a slide with text. To be really creative, you need to fill it with other things like graphs. Why have one graph on a slide when you can have five? That way they're far too tiny to read. They could represent anything. But better than graphs, the thing that is guaranteed to bore your audience no matter what is architecture diagrams. <laughs> yes, no matter what it's meant to portray, no matter what you're talking about, it looks like an indecipherable plate of spaghetti from the back of the audience. So make sure you have as many architecture diagrams as possible. Our next technique is something that I've seen employed to good effect more and more here at OSCON, which is called bait and switch. Bait and switch is when in your talk abstract you promise to talk about one thing and instead you talk about something else completely different. For example, you might be promising a tutorial in which you would cover say seven techniques, but instead you only cover three techniques and that pisses off a lot of your audience because a lot of them were there to see the four that you didn't cover. Or for example, you can promise to give an expert level tutorial and only give a beginner level tutorial instead then the audience feels cheated and taken because you didn't cover the material you promised to cover. Better yet, you can promise a beginner level material and cover expert level material instead and then the audience feels ignorant, baffled, and confused. But the best thing you can do is promise working code and a working demo and then deliver only slides, preferably marketing slides with lots of mentions of your company. For our next technique, our next habit, we're going to actually slow down a little bit. Because really, time is an illusion. And pacing doesn't really matter, and neither does the end of the talk, and the next speaker, or lunch, or whatever. You're an important person with important things to say. The audience will wait for you. So instead, just you know, take it easy, have a conversation with somebody who asked an interesting question, talk to them for 20 minutes about a tangential topic. It's not a problem only now you're running out of time and the projector isn't working and your demo isn't working and the keyboard's locking up and oh my god ah, 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 panic 
Nothing makes the audience hate a speaker more than panicking on stage. So make sure you go through all six stages of panic. First, apologize to the audience. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. Then keep trying to get the demo slides to working. Then apologize to the audience again. Then sit down and start hacking on your laptop and trying to revise the slides in front of the audience. And then apologize some more. And then give up and end the session early. If you cultivate these seven habits, you too can learn to be a terrible presenter and give the worst presentation in the history of OzCon. So are we ready to suck?